Widespread praise greeted the Maroon family's sale of the long empty Michigan Central Depot to Ford Motor Co. But the legacy of the company controlled by the reclusive billionaire family that owned the property for 23 years is far from sealed. The derelict train station, which represents just a sliver of the family's properties, played a large part in shaping the public image of the Manuel, Maddie, Maroon and now his son, Matthew, heir to his father's businesses. The historic depot, vacant since 1988, was just one of dozens of more owned properties in southwest Detroit over the years that residents have urged the family to not let side idle. Decades of legal clashes over the expansion of the Maroon-owned Ambassador Bridge, their ongoing multi-million dollar effort to kill the Gordie Howe International Bridge, and their battles over properties in southwest neighborhoods have left many residents of the Corktown, Mexican Town, Delray and Hubbard Richard neighborhoods skeptical that anything has changed, the Maroons' hardball tactics were on full display last week when they bought a commercial on Fox News, urging President Donald Trump to revoke a permit to build the publicly owned bridge, while taking swipes at former President Obama and Canadians. Jane Garcia, chairwoman of the board of the non-profit Latin Americans for Social and Economic Development, or la SED, admits she may be in the minority as a Maroon supporter. It helped I never viewed the Maroons as the devil, she said, by photo thousands of people attended Ford Motor Company's announcement about the Michigan Central train depot in Detroit on Tuesday, photo, Max Ortiz, the Detroit News, the family's bridge company has given considerable funds to La SED over the years, Garcia said. The Maroons donated land for the construction of the Bagley Pedestrian Bridge, which crosses Interstate 75 to link Mexican Town. A Maroon firm was a major funder for the $17 million Heath facility known as the Community Health and Social Services CHASS, Center, which treats the uninsured and underinsured. Detroit Cristo Ray High School and Forgotten Harvest are other beneficiaries, but property battles are what define the Maroons' legacy for many, and may continue to do so long after Ford's planned redevelopment of the train station is completed in four years. Residents point to empty properties owned by entities linked to the Maroons, vacant lots in residential neighborhoods, industrial buildings and former storefronts, even a fire station. The huge train station was a tiny piece of the family business, which is primarily trucking and logistics firms throughout the U.S. and internationally. But the Maroons prize is the Ambassador Bridge, the largest trade crossing between the United States and Canada. The company wants to add a new span that the family says would pay for itself. By photo people gather in the Grand Hall of the Michigan Central Train Depot on Friday, June 22, 2108 as Ford Motor Company will be giving a tour of the station during an open house photo, Max Ortiz, D. Detroit News, during the 2012 election, the Maroons spent an estimated $50 million on a state ballot proposal aimed at stopping, or at least delaying, construction of the publicly owned Gordie Howe International Bridge. That bridge will be built two miles downriver from the Ambassador. Such a bridge would break the family's monopoly on tolls collected for all the trucks and passenger cars crossing over the Detroit River. The 2012 political effort failed, but the Maroons continue to fight the public bridge. On Wednesday, the Maroons Detroit International Bridge Co. bought a commercial on Fox. The ad urges Trump to revoke a 2013 presidential permit, signed by President Obama, that allows Canada to build the new bridge. Please review that presidential permit. Then, revoke that presidential permit, the narrator says as, America the Beautiful, plays. Choose American. Thank you, sir, the commercial is misleading in numerous ways, said Tim Fisher, a spokesman for the Michigan Department of Transportation, which backs the public U.S.-Canada bridge. The bridge will be jointly owned by Canada and Michigan. The steel will be from Canada and the U.S., the ad's narrator says, who knows who will make the steel? We held strong the train station deal resulted in a rare press conference by Matthew Maroon two weeks ago. Matthew Maroon acknowledged that he and his father were often quite alone against critics over the fate of the vacant depot. We held strong for many years, Maroon told reporters near the razor wire in front of the depot. 
The event was to announce the sale of the World War I era building to Ford, which envisions it as the anchor of a Corktown campus that will design the transportation of the future, including self-driving and electric cars by photo Matthew Maroon at Michigan Central Depot on June 11. Photo, Clarence Tab Jr., the Detroit News, I thank my father for sharing his vision with me about this building and passing on his unwavering strength in standing by your belief even when the short-sighted conventional wisdom folks are hurling rocks, the younger Maroon said, representatives for the Maroons declined to comment further for this story. Supporters say the deal with Ford represents an improved, more open image for the Maroons, particularly now that son Matthew is at the helm, Matt Maroon is emerging as a real leader in this community. Mayor Mike Duggan said at the family's press conference. In 2015, Duggan and Matthew Maroon begun discussing ways to soothe relations between Detroit and the family. The city and Maroon firms have had numerous legal clashes, and in 2009, the city council ordered the family to demolish the eyesore that had become the towering symbol of the Detroit's decades-long decline. They refused. Duggan urged the Maroons to fix up the train depot. Windows were installed not long after, although the missing roof of the main concourse left the building open to the elements. The two sides also struck a deal for a land swap near the Ambassador Bridge. The Maroons agreed to give some of their property for an expanded Riverside Park, along with $5 million to improve it. In exchange the city gave the Maroons land they needed for their proposed second span. History of battles bit some residents of southwest Detroit contend there have been too many battles for bad feelings to heal anytime soon, I know they like to tout a change in leadership with the son now in charge, but this is a company with a long history of litigation. And I think those habits die hard, said Steve Tabachman. From 2003-08, the Democrat was state representative to Southwest Detroit, ending his term as the majority floor leader. Tabachman cited a federal court ruling earlier this month regarding the state of Michigan and a maroon entity, Amex, that operates a duty-free shop and gas station at the bridge. The judge ruled against the maroon firm, which didn't want to sell a summer formula gasoline required by the state. The gas is meant to reduce emissions that increase smog in warmer months. Years ago, Tabachman helped start a group called Bridgewatch Detroit that he said kept an eye on concerns about maroon properties. There were fights about hazardous waste, their seizing of property, Tabachman said. All these things have been a constant for many residents, many in the area still bring up the eight-year battle over the Gateway Project. That was a plan to create an access road next to the bridge in order to get an estimated 10,000 trucks a day off southwest Detroit streets. The project was supposed to be a partnership between MDOT and the Detroit International Bridge Co. It became a years-long court fight, and the trucks kept rumbling through southwest Detroit after the bridge company refused to build its part of the project. At one point, Matty Maroon and another bridge company executive Dan Stamper were briefly jailed after refusing court orders. The land battles in southwest Detroit go back to at least the mid-1990s. That's when Maroon entities began buying houses, only to let them sit empty, creating targets for arsonists and dope addicts, some residents contend. Vince Murray, a former executive with an affordable housing nonprofit called the Badly Housing Association, dealt with Maroon representatives for years over properties in the Hubbard Richard neighborhood in the shadow of the Ambassador Bridge. The biggest issue is they accumulate land, and there seems to be no strategic plan of what they want to do with it, he said. As recently as few months ago, Murray said he met with Maroon executives and handed them a whole list of properties owned by Maroon firms. We'd like some of that for housing, but who knows what they will do, Murray said, there's always been concern that they would let this part of the neighborhood essentially go away and it would be one big trucking terminal that would serve the bridge, he said, one local battle being fought now in the Hubbard Richard neighborhood is over the bridge company's effort to vacate several public streets and alleyways near street. Ann Street, which is named after the historic church. Many Hubbard Richard residents oppose the idea, but the Archdiocese of Detroit and some city officials support it. It's kind of typical of the way they operate and why people have mistrust, Jessica Trevino said.
The Maroons seem to get the key politicians' support and the neighborhood doesn't learn about the plan until later, Trevino was at the Maroons' press conference in front of the train station last week. She planted a small placard that said, Keep St. Anne Street. Open, near the gaggle of media waiting for the press event, I was hoping some of the media would pay attention to what else the Maroons are doing here. I just don't think the Maroons have turned over a new leaf, Lagwilar at DetroitNews.com read or share this story, https colon slash slash detonate.ws slash 2 zem 5.